thing is not going to work with Kyrie. Milwaukee's really good. Hi, Nick. Uh, we can brush past that quickly. Go hey, ahead. Buddy. Yeah, whatever. What? Well, I mean, if you'd like to, I mean, I, I would rather not. I'd rather sit here and marinate it in it like a good <laughs> stew for a moment. I mean, there's the Milwaukee part of things, which is this team's a juggernaut. I, I don't know when people want to acknowledge it. They have 51 wins by double digits. Yeah. Every team that has ever reached a number like that wins the title. Top three offense, number one defense, and oh, yeah, the best player currently playing basketball in Giannis Antetokounmpo. I know that you're big on Kevin Durant's the best player in the world, but you're also big on Kevin Durant and Kyrie, though, couldn't win a title. Well, why if Kevin Durant's the best player in the world? I'm so confused because Giannis is about to make the NBA Finals. And then there's Kyrie. And you love the smart GM. You love the transaction. Yeah. You love Danny Ainge fleecing the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah. I I'm just curious, when Kyrie walks out the door, and the Celtics have nothing to show for it. And we then look at the Nets and the Celtics, Boston and Brooklyn moving forward. Who's in the better position? The Nets with D'Angelo Russell and probably a max free agent this summer, or the Celtics building around the core of Jason Tatum, who took all of Kobe Bryant's worst traits with <laughs> none of Kobe Bryant's best traits and turned himself into an incredibly inefficient basketball player. $64 million wrapped up in Gordon Hayward, like, and Jalen Brown, a homeless man's Kawhi Leonard. I'm just, I'm just curious Listen. who's in a better position moving forward and what the process really was for Boston, because the best year they ever had involved the little Isaiah Thomas, not the actual Kyrie Irving. And that's kind of tough for Celtics fans to swallow, but not if they've been listening to me, who's been telling them this was going to happen for <laughs> six months. But I, that's all. We don't have to say anything. No, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I was wrong on this one. I'd like to move to the next topic, mm -hmm. but I thought it was certainly no well, art, well uh, smartly articulated by you. I do think it uh, doesn't feel great this morning, and Kyrie's leaving, and that's guaranteed. And I don't know exactly what they are, and I think you're right. All right, let's go to something I really like. Um, it is hard to move off popular players. Warriors did it with Monte Ellis, decided we're going to go with this kid from Davidson with bad ankles, and it paid off. Uh, the Patriots have mastered the art of moving off popular players. It is hard. Oklahoma City failed. Um, Joel Embiid, Nick, you know how I feel. He's popular and great and cool and fun and social. I can't build around that. He, he vaporizes Ben Simmons' game. What do you make of Embiid? I mean, what 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 are you going going forward with this team? Well, can't, let, let me ask you something real quick because I'm curious because I listened to the open. I thought it was really interesting. To, you, you clearly have the opinion, Joel and Ben Simmons. You got to pick one of them. I'm just curious, and there's no judgment here. Legitimate question. Yeah. Why are you saying trade Embiid rather than trade Simmons? Because Embiid is going to be expensive and play 58 games a year, and back-to-back -back years in the playoffs, he's not healthy. Simmons is uniquely large for his position, only magic this size, great court vision, don't worry about his injury, can't shoot, but is top three in the league getting ball Two shooters, you trade Embiid, you get a guy who can shoot. I think going forward, you, you, you know, listen, there was Harden and Westbrook. OKC chose the wrong guy, even though Westbrook was better in the moment. That's my takeaway. All right, so I, I think this is actually not a crazy take. I think people react to it like it's a crazy take. I understand where you're coming from. To me, right now, Simmons and Embiid both have one massive weakness. Because you and I were both the captains of the Ben Simmons hype train yep. last year. Yeah. And I think we both assumed that this summer he'd be in the gym instead of in the club with the Kardashian and would come out with a nine-foot jump shot, a 10-foot <laughs> jump shot. His <laughs> shot is so bad that the great writer from The Ringer, Kevin O'Connor, he's been postulating for three years he is literally shooting with the wrong hand. I don't know that he's going to get better at that because I don't know if he's going to work to get better at that. If he doesn't get better at that, he has a defined ceiling as a player. Embiid's issue is totally different. Embiid, fully healthy and fully functional, plays like an MVP. There is Because the league has gone so small, there's no one in the league to match up with him. He's a bad matchup for everyone. But you're not allowed to miss playoff games, man. This is just a rule. Like, if you're injured all year and you miss a season, so be it. But if you play through the season, the only reason you're supposed to miss playoff games is a season 
ending injury if you're a superstar. That's the I didn't make the rules, but I know what the rules are. And for Embiid to, I thought this was it. Whoever made this in the great FS1 graphics department, this is beautiful. Operation, great game, little buzzer, the whole thing. But it's real. Yeah. And it's a concern. And now we don't just have to worry about structural injuries. Hey, man, Colin, you, how long did you go when you first became Colin Coward everyone knew? How long you go without a sick day? Oh, uh, my first year at the other place, I didn't take one for a year and a half. I, I wanted to prove to people right. I'd be there every and, day. And I exactly right. And guess how many since you've known me, you know how many sick days I've taken? Zero. You know how many times I've been sick? Plenty. But I don't treat myself that well. But you got to show up, man. I don't I don't I don't I, I don't want to hear about an upper respiratory infection. And I think Chuck and Shaq nailed it. Even if you know you're compromised, you can't exude the oh, oh man, because energy is infectious yes. in a good and bad way. Yes, it is. It can be infectious positively or negatively. So I, I would be hesitant to trade Embiid because if he stays healthy, he is so transcendent. But I get the point that you're making, and I don't think it's crazy. A minute left, Kawhi Leonard. Give me your best guess where he goes. It's a guess, but what's your guess? Los Angeles. And I don't know which team, but I do not buy for one second the idea that he's anti-LeBron. If you notice this, a lot of these anonymously sourced reports about Kawhi, about Clay, about coaches, all of them seem to have one slant. Everybody hates LeBron James. That's what it turns <laughs> out. I mean, to ignore all those guys showing up on his TV show or the people that have teamed with Clutch Sports. Everyone hates LeBron. I, I think if the Raptors make the finals, I think they've got a real shot at keeping him. Otherwise, I think Kawhi is going to Los Angeles. And if I may, your note on Klay Thompson, I think you nailed it. Clay, if the Warriors give him five years, $200 million on the first minute of free agency, he will stay. If not... He might go to Los Angeles, and he actually would be the perfect teammate yeah. for LeBron James. Yeah, no, he would be. And I think the Warriors, by the way, know that he would be the perfect teammate. I, I, I've argued this for years. Outside of LeBron, he may fit on every roster in the league. A two-way player, not much Cor ego. I, he may be the perfect fit for virtually every team in the NBA. And just, and I know we're late, just quickly, I think what Clay's concern is, and the reason this is out there, is no one expects Durant to make his decision hour one of free agency. Right. And if the Warriors screw around and wait to make Clay's offer until Durant officially makes his decision, they could lose him. The Warriors need to make, lock Clay up the first moment they can. You know Durant's leaving anyway. Don't fool yourself into thinking, ah, maybe we keep Durant. You don't need Clay. You can't disrespect the, one of the original Splash Brothers like that. By the way, Nick Wright crushed me today. He's been on this Celtic thing and Milwaukee thing all year. Not a great day for me. Uh, and so we're 1-1. One, one. That's all right. 1-1. <laughs> one, one. Absolutely. Well, we'll talk more later about when we have the tiebreaker. Good to Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.